Matthew Ma, in his article on Nigerian youth, stated that in Nigeria, money has become so powerful that some people leave, kill, wine, and grind for it. Some even steal to get their bills paid. Money is an essential and indispensable part of our life. Without it, it is impossible to survive in this world. Money has gained so much importance that people are continuously thinking about how to increase their existing wealth and save enormous money for their future needs. Now, some, of, some are of the opinion that the fear of poverty and need to acquire wealth for future needs is what motivates most Nigerian youth. While a few are of the opinion the Nigerian youth are driven by purpose and something bigger than them. So today we're asking, are Nigerian youth money driven or purpose driven? In. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. You could also tweet at us at WeShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WeShow. Do you think, let me start with you, Jennifer. Do you mm. think Nigeria is a money-driven or purpose-driven? I think it's 50-50. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people always focus on the Nigerian youth, Nigerian youth. <laughs> Because even the older generation, as we see now, a lot of them were money-driven. Mm -hmm. And you only find probably a handful that were actually purpose-driven who have set the pace for a lot of us right now. And those are people that you probably call the pioneers. Yeah. Um, bringing it back to the youth, I think it's 50-50. Because with what I see these days, with the kind of conversations people are having both on and off the internet, it's like... So most times it's money. Mm. And then sometimes you find people who actually have a purpose and that's what they want to get to. Sometimes you find people who initially started out with a purpose. They know where they're headed. They know what they want to do. They want to impact lives. But along the line, along the line it changes. It and now it. it's like, oh, they only care about the money, all they see is the money. Oh, I want to be rich. You have people who want to get rich quick. You have people who are already rich and they want to maintain that wealth. You have people who are already rich and they want more. So for me, I think it's 50-50. Yeah. But the scale is still towards <laughs> <laughs> towards money. Towards towards money. money. <laughs> okay, Mary, let me hear your thoughts. Um, I think I most definitely would agree with Jennifer as well. Um, although as a country, I feel like there's a lot of survival mode, yeah. um, which is, I mean, people, even people that come out with first class in school, you know, don't have jobs, talk more of, you know, talking about purpose, mm. you know, so we're, we're if, in as much as it's half and half, I think there's still a lot of us well driven by money. money. And um, we're in the social media age, which hasn't really helped us. So we see the millennials, the older generation, we see the lifestyle and we want to live the lifestyle. There's also this new generation of creators, you know, so you have creators on Instagram and we also fail to realize maybe some of these are like paid partnerships, you know, but we're like, oh, this girl wore this dress, you know what, I want this dress as well. And, you know, is your, is your income able to sustain that? Yeah. So, you know, you, it's, it's like you keep chasing the money, you know, without realizing, oh, okay, what really why am I at this job, you know, and what really is my purpose? So I, I think it's, it's half and half, but it's still more money-driven. Okay. Isi, let's hear your thoughts. Well, this is, this is such an interesting topic because the youth of Nigeria, like Jennifer said, uh, <laughs> kind of varies because we keep talking about the youth standing out as money driven, but we also have others who are the older generation of being quite money driven. And for us to dissect this, we need to understand that money being money driven is it has a negative connotation. And this negative connotation is that your interest is more into your your interest is excessively all about money, basically. And if your interest is all about money, basically, that means that all you're thinking about is how do I make more money? Not because you have a higher calling of what you want to do with the money. Like Mary says, you are just going through the motion to accumulate more wealth without you looking at your wives. 
why you're looking for the money. You just want more money. So irrespective of your values, that's where we have individuals who are, you know, they go into money rituals, they do all sorts of things in the name of acquiring wealth. So being money driven has a negative connotation. Now let's take it to being purpose driven. To be purpose driven has a positive connotation. And that means that the individual is interested in making an impact, giving people um, something that is higher than himself. It has a higher calling, basically. And what are the characteristics of being purpose driven? To be purpose driven, you have to be able to achieve something um, with a goal and is measurable. And be purpose driven, you have to be resource, you have to be um, basically goal oriented, intelligent, uh, resourceful, curious, a problem solver, and ultimately God conscious. Now, do we as Nigerians have all of these qualities? Yes, we do. We have all of these qualities, whether we are doing it negatively or positively. That is essential. That's why you see that when they say the thief is going to steal, steal what does he do? He will pray first to solve a problem. Mm. And the key thing is, are they intelligent about it? In some ways, yes, we, they are. So it still brings us to the concept of the mindset of the average Nigerian youth. Mm, yeah, yeah. What's the idea behind the average Nigerian youth? Mm. What drives them? What motivates them? What makes them want to do things, uh, maybe go the fraudulent way or go towards being purpose driven, which is the um, higher calling? What drives them? During the NSAS, we saw a lot of purpose-driven Nigerians, believe it or not. But again, we saw vis-a-vis -vis individuals who were money-driven, who must have caused the mayhem during the uh, NSAS. Yeah. Let me give you this example based on what um, Jennifer stated earlier about the older generation before I, I, I move on again. There is this lady who was right in front of me and the another lady who was, who was older was walking behind this woman and her money dropped. I expected this lady to actually tell her, oh, my picking. This lady is about, she's been in her 50s or 60s who was walking right behind a lady who was probably in her 20s. And also this lady to, you know, mama to call the uh, young lady and say, ah, my picking, take your money will drop. What did she do? She picked the money and placed it in her pocket. Now that's an old generation not being sincere, irrespective of the values you expect an older woman to have irrespective of whatever she believes in, at that particular point in time, she will say, find this keeper. God dropped this money for me. I have picked it up. Mm. So we have the mindset of the Nigerian youth generally um, a bit, should I say, the Nigerian youth has a lot of work to do as individuals, as a collective body. And how do we do this? We have to for the fact that we have to talk to the individuals or the Nigerian youth about where, what and where we want to go. What do we believe in? The society right now is all about survival, survival, survival. The Nigerian youth, if you look at it from the money-driven perspective, all they're thinking about is survival. How are they going to survive this generation, this situation that they found themselves currently in. Yes, again, we also have those who are purpose driven. So yes, it's a two way street. We have those who are purpose driven and yes, we have those who are money driven. Now, 
Does it tilt towards those who are purpose driven or money driven more? It's going to be based on statistics, which I do not have. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is this you're literally giving us a proper, a proper down, breakdown, down right? Everything. Okay, thank you, Isi. So for me, right, I, I would, and this is me talking about Nigerian youth in general. Mm -hmm. So now let's go back to the stories that we've heard about all of the rituals. I remember there was one time, I don't know if it was, I think it was 2021, between 2021 and the early months of 2022. There were so many stories of rituals, you know, boyfriend killing girlfriend mm. finding missing body parts mm. and you know things like that and that's the angle i want to look at it from mm. well one of the angles i want to look at it from tonight right we see that a lot of um, um nigerian youth that I, I i don't want i don't know if i should call it under some sort of societal pressure yeah to make money because everybody wants to drive a flashy car they yeah. want to use the latest apple products they want to, you know, leave La Vida Loca, go on mm. vacations and whatnot. And this also even applies to the, the, the ladies as well. You see, yeah. the girls are now going to the extreme to do also. We talk, we're talking the other day about BBL and why people are getting BBL. And we talked about how some people are doing that as a form of investment. This is because they want to do things that's going to earn them money that they know that they will not sit in an office mm. to earn or, you know, do some sort of business. Mm. So everybody's looking for the get rich Quick. quick Scheme. you know scheme yeah right to make money out of so if we're looking at it from that angle right i know that i mean and i do not even say this you know with any form of what now mm -hmm. i know that there are people out there who actually work there who actually work so hard to, to make to make good money clean money right and I, I appreciate and respect those people a whole lot but then we keep hearing these stories of how people are going to the extremes to do all sort of things there's the pressure of oh i want to be recognized when you talk about the um achievers top 30 achievers in 2023 they're talking about all oh, people that are making boards and whatnot i'm even going to come to that particularly right mm -hmm. so this th this is where i want us to look at this um conversation from what do you think nigerian youth should focus more on i mean i've i hear you you say there's money driving you of course i mean money is very important See, yeah. money is you need money for your everyday um life right it's absolutely important at the same time it's imp also important to fulfill purpose because whatever religion it is that you know i'm sure that at some point you know that you have a mandate on earth there's something that you're supposed to be doing and that's definitely fulfilling purpose so there's also that as well but then how do how what can the nigerian youth do better what do you think that we need to change what do you think is there a mentality is there a mindset is there something that some people have probably gotten wrong somewhere is there some sort of pressure from the society that is affecting you know what people are doing now i mean i i think i would actually come back to this conversation first let's let's take a break and then when we come back we'll continue the conversation If you're just tuned in into our ladies' night out and we're discussing the topic, are Nigerian youths money-driven or purpose-driven? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Our phone line is now open. Please call us on 0702500749. Call us on 0702500749. Pona, remember to turn down the volumes of your devices that you may be calling us from so that we don't have feedback and we can hear you properly. Yeah, so before we went on a break, I was saying, what do you think the Nigerian youth need to do better? I was talking about the rituals, I was talking about yep. the scams, but you know, we've heard a lot of scam in the tech um, space as well, mm -hmm. not just, not only in Nigeria, by the way. You know, when we come and hear, yeah, globally, we hear, oh, so there's this 26 year old who owns a multi million, whatever, multi million dollars, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then in two years, two years down the line, you're hearing that he's been arraigned by the police, the feds have got. And I'm asking myself, okay, because when the stories come out, right, it then makes, well, people like me, I sit down, I'm like, oh, okay, what could this person probably be doing? The person has created a solution to solve. And immediately, I look, start unconsciously looking up, okay, maybe I can also do this in this way, do this in this way. Because, guy, okay, it sounds beyond Forbes list. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you see, I, um, the, the media also mm, has, has, a role to, to play. Has, a, has a role to play. You know, mm. the media has portrayed this quick scheme 
Um, and I think what we can do is self-awareness and let people also be honest with the process. Mm. You know, when you hear stories of these people who have made it, you know, it, it helps. Yeah. You know, sometimes when I go to visit my clients and they tell me, do you know when I started working? Hmm. I started working at 17. You know, I, I didn't have this. You know, it, 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 it brings me back to say, yeah. okay, you are, you are really not doing so yeah. bad as you think. You know, it's baby steps to where you are, you are going. You know, so if we can have more of those stories portrayed, you know, it would, it would help, you know, to, because you can't be telling someone that, um, mm. find your purpose, find your purpose. You are there driving Porsche. The person doesn't even know your before story, doesn't mm. know any backstory. The person just seeing you and the person just thinking, please, this, I want this where I want to get, you know, <laughs> but when you're able to, you know, talk to the younger ones, you know, encourage them to say, okay. It's okay, I understand that it's tough where you are, mm -hmm. but it's going to get better. You know, the same way we preach about the country, Nigeria, you know, we're able to tell ourselves, okay, you know what, it's this way, but it's going to get better. Because a lot of us are still in survival mode. And when you're in survival mode, it's really hard to think, what is your purpose? You know, it's, it's hard because you just want to come out of that, that rat hole. And then... You just realize that I'm actually comparing myself to people that are way older than me. Mm. You know, or you you see a married person, you know, the person has had kids, the person has, everyone has gone through their struggles. But if you're not aware of it, you know, if you're not able to call yourself back, you just be moving. And I also wanted to say something, or I wanted to ask that, do you think you can be both money driven and purpose driven? Because Less, I mean, everybody wants to be comfortable to some point. Extent. Yes. And I think in that strive as well, mm -hmm. you can even find your purpose mm -hmm. in that journey to, you know, being comfortable. Yeah. So I, I don't, mm -hmm. I, yeah, so I'm just wondering. I think you can, you can have a bit of both. Okay. Mary. Mm -hmm. So you said something at first, right? Let me, let me, <coughs> let me touch on that first. So you see this thing called, if I hear you correctly, talking about someone who's when you go to someone's office and they say, "Oh, at 17, I made my first million and things like that," when well, they're talking about mentorship, mm, right? Yeah. But I have a problem with mentorship. I feel like 80 percent, 85 percent of the times, right? These people don't tell you the truth. Okay. They True tell that. you, "Oh, I was 22 when I started." my business and I made five million naira and da, da 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 and when you go back you find out that there was some sort of money laundering or there was some sort even of they got a head start even in life push, parents yeah. or something like mm. that. You can't compare someone who is from an elite family mm. to mm. someone who is literally from the grassroots. And this is what happens in most cases. You mm. find young people in schools like Unilori, Unilag and so, and then you now see these people that they come and bring to them and say, oh, they are your mentors. Mm. Then you hear the names. Oh, we know there are certain names that carry weight in Nigeria. And then yeah. you now hear, oh, this is my mentor. This is my mentor. And I'm asking myself, look, it's okay to have a mentor, right? But is your mentor really guiding you through the right path? So that's my own, that's just my own problem with mentorship because I find out that in most cases, the mentor does not particularly do what they are supposed to be doing. Mm. They come and tell you the sweet stories of how, you know, some of them even, even have sad stories at the beginning, how they worked so hard and how they did da, 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 how they used to trek from Mushin to Ibadan and, you know, things like that. But then when you now dive deep into it, you find out that they are saying things that they are not saying to you. And you are now walking in that path of what it is that they've told you or what they've taught you mm. or what you're supposed to have learned from them. And you find out that it's not particularly working for me, mm. right? Now, that's one part of it. Now, you also asked, okay, is it possible to have, to be purpose-driven and money-driven? I don't mean to be religious, right? But mm. the truth is that when you are walking in God's path for you, mm. the money will come. Okay. So, if truly and indeed you are fulfilling the mandate that you were placed on earth to fulfill mm. you will make money from it your what's that thing your talent will make way for you what's how, how is it said that's what i believe though i mean yes at the beginning it might not be all 
rosy. Yeah, it might be as difficult as to, as to, yeah, as, it might as as even be difficult to, be. to figure out what you are even supposed to be doing in the first place. But the thing is that most of us are so lazy and laid back these days nobody wants to put in the work nobody wants to work nobody wants to you know because the truth is it's not easy to amass wealth it is hard it's not you're not just going to wake up one morning and yeah some people i mean favor or luck as you may call it they get it like at the snap of their fingers and whatnot but for some of us it's not that easy you literally to pay your rent you are working your you are working so i don't know why i keep wanting to say that <laughs> but they, <laughs> you're working so hard to make the money, to even feed you. I'm working so hard to make money because I was having a conversation with my friend today and then she said, oh, see, my income is not even meeting my daily needs anymore. Like, divide my transport money by 30, divide the feeding by 30. I'm spending more than, and it's not because she's trying to live a frivolous lifestyle. It's just that things are really meaning. tough in the country right now, right? So when we hear things like this, some people don't have the tenacity or the resilience mm. to keep pushing to make more money. So instead, what they do, they go to the get rich quick scheme, mm. and then they resort to doing all sorts to make money. So I, I think that's where that's where this thing. But yeah, like you said, purpose and money. It mm. actually works. I agree. It works hand in hand. But first things first, you have to be sure that you, how do people amass wealth in the first place? You have to be creating a solution to something. For you to be able to make money that's how businesses run right mm -hmm. you are either creating you're providing a service or you're selling a product mm -hmm. that is solving a problem and that's how you get clients or customers and you're able to make money from it if that is your purpose you are definitely it means that you're going to be passionate about it it means that you're going to do it with also even when things are tough and mm. on the days when you don't even feel like getting up or feel like sending that email or feel like having that meeting or anything that thing in you would just keep you going mm -hmm. right so that's my own it's tough mm. i know i know so um i hear both of you and i 100 percent agree but let me let me say this um so first of all let's even start with the definition of purpose so purpose is a cumulative effect of meaningful goals and um purpose is also um having an impact mm -hmm. now one of the issues that we have is the fact that people feel like having an impact means it has to be big mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to be recognized for it. Yeah, the thank entire you. World thank you. Has to hear about it. Yeah, you. yeah. Um, it what? <laughs> the entire Nigeria, all your states, they have to you put have you to on the on news Disney. and say, mm -hmm. "Oh yeah, you paved the way for this. You did it. Mm -hmm. You did that." But mm -hmm. honestly, that's not what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so I can I can have what three, four, five people in my immediate community. Yes. And when I use the word community, I'm not talking about your yeah. streets. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Your network of people, yes. your circle of people, and you are impacting them in one way or the other. And that is purpose. That is impactation. Somebody feels your impact every day. I might feel your impact just because you spoke to me nicely mm. or mm. I was going through something and you were there for mm. me. As far as I'm concerned, you have impacted me. And I can True. remember and look back and say, oh, Sharon, or Michael did this and it changed my life. Mm -hmm. I remember the last time when, um, I, I can't remember the show, what we were talking about that day. I think it was about um, body positivity. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned how my former pastor's wife, how I was she, feeling so bad about myself and my health. Yeah. And my height, height rather. Yeah. And she called me to the side and had a conversation. Like she washed me from top to down and had that conversation with me. And that changed my yeah, life right. now every time i look back and i remember and i look at myself now where my mind is and where i am right now mm. i kind of attribute some of that to her. to her because if she had not done that for me i don't know where i would have been of i don't course. know where my mind or my mental state of mind would oh, have been yeah. right now and to me that is impact impact doesn't necessarily mean that um you have to feed 10,000 people. Mm. True. That's Very not it. True. Very true. It, it starts with your immediate environment. It starts with your brothers and your sisters. It starts with your friends. It starts with your colleagues. It doesn't necessarily have to be what well, your entire street that, oh, okay, well, they gave somebody, you came into money, or you've been working so hard, and you decided that, okay, I want to start 
the road. I want to <laughs> fix our streets. <laughs> and the truth is, sometimes if you look at these things that people do just to be recognized, it comes yeah. from a selfish oh, yes. part Sorry. because you have an ulterior motive. motive. Now, when you talk about purpose and impact, there is no ulterior motive attached to it. Mm. And true. another thing is, you can't fulfill purpose, you can't impact lives if you don't even know what you're doing. Mm, a lot of people don't even know what their purpose is. Mm. And the first step is recognizing what it is. Some people are waiting, oh, it has to be big, oh, I need to have money. I was in church one day and we we're having this conversation where we do this in group mm -hmm. conversations. And then they played a video about a guy who, um, who had, um, was he ADHD? I can't remember, yeah. but he didn't. He, he he couldn't. He wasn't doing well in his schoolwork. Mm -hmm. But his dad and his mom decided, okay, you know what? You're good at painting. Why not go into art? From art, he went into photography, and it became a big shot. And when we started having that conversation, and um, one thing the pastor said, our pastor said was, ask yourself questions. What is that thing you've always wanted to do? But you've not been able to do it. Mm -hmm. And what is hindering you Stopping from doing it? it. Yeah. And everyone was talking, oh, I've always wanted to do this, but I've not been able to do it. Blah, blah, blah. Everyone forgot the part that said, what is stopping you? Mm -hmm. Everyone focused on, oh, this what is what I want to do. do. This is what I want. Yeah. And they sounded like big dreams. Mm -hmm. And when I was hearing, I was like, oh, interesting. Marvelous. <laughs> Ah, so when they finished, I said, okay, now that we've off, I didn't talk. Yeah. Because me, I already know what is stopping me. I'm stopping myself. <laughs> and the main issue that I found that was um, the block. similar to yeah. everybody was also the same for me because mine was still money. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I can't do this unless I travel abroad or unless I live in so so place. So I can't start this thing. And mine, at the time, what I was thinking about in my head, my goal wasn't exactly to impact lives. Or other people, they wanted to really impact lives. <laughs> mine was, I want to start making something, something, something. Yeah. People will buy, will make money. money. I want to have money. <laughs> but hearing theirs, and I'm like, hmm. Then I asked the question, so what's stopping you? Mm. And one, the girl goes, oh, um, money to do this, blah, 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 blah. I asked the second guy, What's stopping you? Money. And he says, oh, money to this, money to do that. So his was um, work out. He wanted, to, he wanted to work on people's mindsets and help them become fit and find their way. I mean, in the health sector. In health sector. Yeah. While the lady, what she wanted to do was to help the less privileged and stuff like that. And I'm like, hmm. So I went to the lady first and I said, see, I know someone who I went to school with. And by the time she graduated, she took up a boy that she found on the streets and she started paying for his school fees. His school fees wasn't expensive. Yeah. It was very... And she would post when, oh, he just finished JSS 1 now. He just finished JSS 2 now. Oh, finally, he's done with secondary school. We're trying to get... And it was amazing to see. Yeah. When I saw that and I saw her, my view of this girl changed, changed. overnight because I saw what she did. And I gave her that story. And I said, see, you don't need to have, to a have you. An NGO. <laughs> you yeah. don't need to impact the lives of 10,000 children. Know. That's that one child. Yeah. There's somebody on your street, there's a child on your street who hasn't been to school and they love books. Pay for their school fees. Mm. School fees is probably 5,000 naira. And that's because they go to a federal school or a government school. You can pay for it. Start there. Once you start doing things like that, people are seeing the work that you're putting in. As far as you're not doing it, you're not being a hypocrite or you're not doing it for clout. You're not doing it for clout. No, or it's not eye service. Do you understand? You do something like that, people would see it and say, oh, you're doing an amazing job. Mm -hmm. They would want to fund donate, you yes. or donate. And sometimes that might not be the end goal. Mm -hmm. You don't want people to donate. God will somehow bless you for it. And then the guy who was into fitness, and I'm like, see, do you have a space? you have a family house you do start something if you can't do that in your in your house mm. you can start something okay every saturday we'll start running i remember then in uni i just started everyone just knew me as jennifer the fitness i might just start working out though they always see me working out people are like ah, ah. they are always so slim and slender i said it's work cool it's not it's not overnight it's work there's some things i don't eat and there's some things that i eat in portions. In, yeah, in portions, that kind of thing. But if you want to join me, not a problem. And people started joining me. Ladies from different oh, different right. hostels will come and then we'll all work out together. And then somebody asked me one day, are you charging them for this? I said, no. 
my own is I just want to see the changes and I want yeah. these women to be happy with the results that they are seeing. And then towards graduation, a girl who was also working out with us came to meet me that ah, that her mom said that she would buy me my graduation. She would buy them. Um, she would buy my graduation dress for me if her daughter reduces in size. Blah blah okay, blah blah blah. Let's do this. And I looked at her <laughs> and I looked at her and I'm like, I mean, that's a nice gesture and I love that. But the well, truth is that I'm not I can't help walk. you get to it. <laughs> It's all you. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. I can help you and give you that motivation. But at the end of the day, it's the work that you put in mm. that matters. But tell your mom, thank you. Mm. And that was it. At the end of the day, I didn't even remember that somebody said we're going to buy a graduation dress. I wasn't now banking on the graduation. Oh, I went up. So in essence, what am I saying? Take our time to find out what your purpose is. And it's something you need to sit and think about it. Like, like, um, like um, Mary said, we're literally, a lot of us are in survival mode. And that's the honest truth. Like, you really cannot find the time to say, well, I won't think about purpose. I'm trying to survive. I want to make more money. And yes, money is good. I want to make money. I want to be rich. I want to be wealthy. But if, if, it, if it coincides with what God has called me to do on earth, mm. then pff, it can go. And that's the honest truth. It, 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 it's a hard pill to swallow, but until you get to that point, you might not be able to find your purpose. Oh. I know, right? Huh. Jennifer is definitely speaking from experience. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Isi, let's hear what you have to say. Well, basically, the ladies have, you know, broken a lot of things down, basically, yeah. and... What really resonated with me in the course of their discussion was the fact that um, we need a change of mindset. Yeah. Whether that I think whether we look at it from the perspective of the fraudulent um, money-driven youth, or we look at it from the perspective of the purpose-driven youth. Okay, we need a change of mindset. How do we intend to change the mindset? We need to change the narrative. Now, like I stated earlier, we didn't get to this point in our society the, um, overnight. It started from way back, basically. And in the cause of it, the mindset of the individuals or the youth started to change in terms of social interaction, in terms of the way they communicate, basically, and in the way they thought. And this stems from survival mode. It stems from survival mode. Somewhere along the line, they transcended from survival mode into, you know, the purpose-driven mode. But before then, there was survival mode. So to answer Mary's question, yes, there is a balance between being money driven and being uh, purpose driven, basically. So it depends on where you find yourself at that particular point in time, which most times actually stems from survival mode. Mm. Okay? So, yes, it is possible. But, however, some people tend to remain in survival mode instead of them transcending into the purpose driven mode. And that's where you see that. We have individuals who are excessively into money, irrespective of values or whatever beliefs they have that they are supposed to, you know, do in terms of um, or impact they're supposed to have in the society. So when we look at it from that perspective, mm -hmm. we need to understand that yes, the, um, the people, some people do not change from that mindset. So we need to work on the individuals. Mindset, yes, yes, very yes, true. We need to very work true. On the individuals and we need to work on our mindset as a collective entity, basically. Yeah, yeah. That's Thank you very where much, I you think see. we need to. All right, quickly, you see, I think you also have a comment. Can we quickly take the comments you have? Okay, my comment is from. Okay, this says. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying? Hashtag ways. Are Nigerian youth money driven or purpose driven? To be honest and sincere, if you look at it very well, most of them are money driven and not purpose driven. Why I said so is that they allow distraction to set in. They put aside their purpose 
<laughs> which will make them decent, respected, and responsible. Another thing is that they are also money conscious. I agree with you on that. Money conscious because they see that their friends have made it and they want to join and they want to join in and make it as well. My dear beautiful sister Chinelo made a mention of purpose and money going hand in hand, which I agree. If these youth are focused on uh, focus on purpose more, which can change their lives and make them um, responsible, then money can come later. To me, the two of them go hand in hand. I agree with you. I must confess you ladies look beautiful and good looking. Yes. My name is Daniel Ilo. Ways thank you so much, time. Isi. Thank you, Daniel. This has been quite an interesting conversation, and clearly, we there's so much to still uncover. But before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quotes, here it is again. Being successful and fulfilling your life's purpose are not at all the same thing. You can reach all your personal goals, become a raving success by the world standard, and still miss your purpose in life. And this is by Rick. Warren. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring on that great conversation to your screen.